First off, I just thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to feature you on our platform. Um, I follow your information and it has helped me just off of the things that I've listened to off your podcast and watching you on the Steve Harvey show and, you know, just following your work. So thank you so much uh, for allowing us to feature you in this issue. Thank you for the honor. I am we're going to kick this year off right. So we right. We got a big new year revolution going on with money. And so I think this will be a perfect, you know, resource to drive people to. So I'm excited. Awesome. Awesome. So let's get into it. So, um, <clears throat> the majority of the Natural Woman Magazine platform are filled with women who desire to achieve a balanced spiritual, personal, and professional lifestyle. What would be the first steps in achieving this balance? In your opinion, the first step in achieving balance is to let go and let down. I think as women, we are so driven to do it all, to be everything. I mean, think about it. We carry babies in our bodies for nine months. <laughs> <laughs> that right there is the, the biggest taxing uh, experience of a lifetime. And I'm a del- member of Delta Sigma Theta, and I, I was watching something, and elephants, I think, are pregnant. For like 22 months, let me tell you, if I had been pregnant for 22 months, there would have never been a, a human race. <laughs> so because we are, we give birth, we literally, life comes through us, and that's for all the women out there who are surrogate mothers. And whether you physically did it, or you're raising a niece or a nephew, or a, a, a grandchild, or you're the godmother, you know, it's not even so much about that death who's coming through you, but as mothers and as women, um, we are creators, and we naturally want to give life. And when you have that kind of responsibility, we think that we can do it all and make it happen, and the truth is we cannot. And so surrendering um, is the reason I'm talking to you right now. I have been doing this for over 20 years, but um, I'm just coming on the platform, you know, in terms of national television. And, uh, you know, I've been asked, Russell Simmons, this is life. They've been asking me for almost a decade to come from behind the scenes, and the truth is I wasn't ready. I needed to grow. I needed to learn some things, and um, this was the ultimate surrender for me. And so if women will surrender, then we can have the balanced life. Um, You know, one of the things that I get to share with people, they ask me all the time because, you know, the truth is my life is, uh, and I I don't brag because I have been through the lowest of the low. I, I did not grow up with a silver spoon in my mouth. I I came to very, very rough times, but now I have a wonderful marriage. I have beautiful children. Everybody's healthy and whole. And people say, well, how do you do all of that plus have a career? Let go and let God. I can't do everything. So I might not make it to every cheerleading uh, practice or every football game. I might not make it um, to this or that thing, but I do what I can do with truth and love, and I let God handle the rest. That would be my um, best advice. Mm. And that is some great advice. So... People call you the guru when it comes to growing, maintaining a business, um, and the advice you get for uh, on how to do that. What advice do you have for those who are who are trying to maintain and grow their business in this economy? You know, the best advice for maintaining and growing your business is to be really, really clear about what you can do well. Um, I've been the kind of person my entire life. And if I take something on, you're going to know that I'm in your business. Um, when I first started working with MC Light, for example, I was number one at Prudential. Um, I was running one of Russell Simmons' companies, but nobody ever felt it. Russell never felt like I was missing. MC Light never felt like I was missing. I did the best that I could do in every instance. I was, um, I created systems. So I would say for people to not take on too much, to be honest, about what it is that they can do. And then once you're honest about what it is that you can do, make sure you're giving that thing your best. And, you know, I subscribed to something many, many years ago. I heard um, Steve Harvey speaking on the morning radio, and I call it the sleep sermon. sermon. And he was saying, let me tell you something. If you're trying to grind and get to the next level, you cannot get to the next level sleeping eight hours a day. You cannot sleep away a third of your life 
and think that you're going to have the kind of massive, massive success that you uh, dream of. So he said, get your rest, but get back on your grind. And, you know, that's my thing. It's one of the things that I tell people. When I've been in this position where I have been trying to leverage the gifts that God has given me to help other people grow, if there was something, I didn't go to sleep until it was done. That was it. The end. And if I was too sleepy to keep moving, what I do is I take a nap, but I have that alarm, I get back up. You are not going to wake up with an outstanding, a missing deliverable from me if you expected it. If you send me something, I'm going to communicate. So really I think, you know, I'm going to answer this question in this way. People think chivalry is dead. No, it's not. Men still need to open doors for women. You know, there's still certain things as a woman that I expect. Well, I'm going to transfer that to business. If you are in business, be in business. And if you're not in business, don't be in the business. But get out of the way of the people who are trying to handle their business. So I just say do what you do well, with excellence, show up. Be that person that someone will go in a room and talk about and say, you know what, this person is on my team, and they will refer you to Oprah. They will refer you to, you know, the highest, you know, person in business in the food chain. Are you running your business that way? Are you showing up every day like that? And then I would also say, minimize your expenses. Don't think that you have to spend a lot of money on overhead and things like that. So be excellent, minimize the expenses, and when you're excellent with low expenses and low overhead, the work will come to you and you will flourish. Mm. Okay, and that just segues way into our third question. And that question is... um. As entrepreneurs, most entrepreneurs are very tight when it comes to spending their dollars, um, especially when they have a family and responsibilities to maintain. What advice would you give entrepreneurs on spending and making their money work for them? Well, you know, one of the things I'm sick and tired of, everybody's looking for the, the hand down. Everybody's looking for the credit program that's going to let people with bad credit get some money. Everybody's looking for the investors who are going to invest. And I'm telling people, Especially women, look at yourself. Look at yourself. What are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to give up? Let me tell you something. There is nobody who can come into my business and invest more than I have. If you're working for 48 hours straight, they I have done it for 68. If you have spent money on getting here, there, or everywhere, let me tell you something. When I first started working with Russell, I didn't have the money. I was broke. They asked me to come do an event in New York at the Hamilton Ballroom. People were saying to me, well, you should have him do this. I'm not having him do anything. He extended me the invitation, and I asked God to open the door. So I got there by any means necessary, and I showed up, and I was not begging. I didn't ask for any handouts. I took what was offered, and the rest I made work. I got my community together, my team, my godmother came. She gave me one of her credit cards. I did it, and I did not complain about what I did not have. And so, you know, I just say to entrepreneurs, be frugal. Live below your means. When you get a big check from a big job, don't spend it. Do not go out and buy a new kitchen <laughs> or a new bathroom or a new car or a new car. Put that money to the side because you never know when you will be when you will need to go to the next level. When I first went on the Steve Harvey show, I had no idea that literally they would be buying books from me all day and all night. And where are people gonna go? They're gonna go to Amazon. And that's why a lot of people go out of business when they get on the national platform because they cannot meet the demand. And Amazon doesn't give you your money right away. So you got to have thousands of books ready for people to buy if you want to be able to operate at that level. So you've got to make that investment. You've got to make sure that you're in a position to capitalize on an opportunity. That would be uh, what I would say to that question. Mm, and that was a great response. So most of our readers want to get and maintain wealth. Is there a process to this? And if so, what are the steps? The first step is to change your mind. Until you change your mind, you will never be wealthy. Until you stop trying to keep up with the Joneses, until we stop trying to live beyond our means, until we stop trying to prove that we're here for everybody. Let me tell you, I'm not here for everybody. I got to tell some people no. Because if I tell everybody yes, I'm going to be broke and I can't help you. So I got to tell you no right now so I can live in the truth and then build this empire and then I can come back and help. So change our mind. I think that we are our own worst enemy. 
we ourselves are our own worst enemy. And then the number two enemy are the people who are closest to us. And sometimes that could be your kids. Because <laughs> let me say something, kids will make you feel guilty. In my house, school is free. If you get A's, you go to school for free. If you get C's, you go to the free school. Either way, it's going to be free. But I'm not paying for C's if you don't work for A's. So guess what? I don't need to live my life with my children. If you want to go to Howard University, you better get a scholarship. If you want to go to such and such, because if you can't, you go into the community college where the tuition is two ninety nine. You can go get you a job at McDonald's or Starbucks, and you can take it from there. That gives them independence, and it frees you up. All too often, we are trying to help everybody. Which, oh my God, they didn't have. I didn't have this opportunity. Well, let me tell you something. We've got to teach the people around us how to grind, sacrifice, and be as self-sufficient as we are. So one is to change your mind. Two is to spend below your means and to live by the 10, 10, 30, 50, which I talk about in Living Tech the Monday, but it's basically this. The first 10% you tithe uh, of every dollar that you get, the next 10% you save, 30% is cash in your pocket, so you will not be subject to a spending addiction, which is what you have when you go to the department store for toothpaste and walk out with $179.47 worth of stuff you don't need. So if you don't have cash, can't buy it. If it doesn't fit, get rid of it. And that cash is for your hair, grocery, gas, nails, all of those things, those individuals. And then the remaining 50% stays in your checking account for your bills. Now, if there's not enough money in your checking account for your bills, guess what? You got to get rid of some stuff. You got to get rid of some bills. And I remember I was talking to a lady. She said, well, Lynn, I've got apartment. I kept looking at her. I said, get rid of the apartment. She said, what do you mean? I said, you can't afford it. You've gotten, you've gotten everything, you've gotten rid of everything, and now you can't afford the place. Now, this is what you need to do. You need to go move in with your grandma, your best friend, your friend from college. You need to humble yourself. Save that money, sleep on the couch, stack your dollars for about a year, and then you'll be able to make a better decision. It might mean moving to a new neighborhood. It might mean moving to a new state. There is no way in the world that I'd be living check to Monday trying to live in California. The cost of living is way too high. I go somewhere like Houston or Dallas or Charlotte or whatever the case may be. So we have to get in the place of understanding that one plus one equals two. And if you are looking at your bills and there's not enough money, you got to get rid of some of the bills. Now, if there is more than enough money, that's not a license to just go out and start doing everything. If you've got more than enough money after your bills are paid, that's where you can start to build wealth. The first thing you want to do is try to pay down all of your debt, your credit cards, car loans, uh, you know, mortgages. Allocate a certain percentage to all your credit cards. Pay those off. If you've got a $50 payment on your credit card bill and now you've got $200 extra, now pay two fifty on it, okay? So you can get rid of that bill. Once that bill is done in three, four, five months, now you take that two fifty and apply it to the next credit card bill. Maybe that credit card bill was 100 Instead of paying hundred, you're gonna take the two fifty that you were paying, add it to the hundred. Now you're paying three fifty. You're gonna knock that out. I have been on the Steve Harvey show with people who have been who will be in debt for twenty years, who are gonna be out of their credit card debt in a year and will be out of all their debt in less than four years. So that's what you wanna focus on. Now, do you wanna just pay put put all your money on bills and have no funds? No. Allocate ten percent or five percent so that you can go on a family vacation. Or you can do some Christmas shopping. But make sure that you are staying on the wealth track. And once you are debt-free, then you can take all of that money and start to build your retirement. Because the goal is to have several million dollars in retirement that you can establish an income for life. And um, that's what it's all about. Mm, Great information. So um, with you being a life, spiritual, and financial coach, do you feel that there's a connection to our money and our beliefs and the Absolutely. amount of money we it's, get? Yeah. yeah, there's definitely a connection. It's all connected. As a matter of fact, I, I don't really, you know, subscribe to some people say, well, that's business, this is personal. Uh-uh, it's all the same. <laughs> How are you going to be one thing in business with something else in personal? It's all connected, and so... The, the degree to which we submit and submission is all about spirituality. I love the Lord Jesus Christ, so that's who I submit to. But the truth is, whatever it is that you do, if you can find a way to dig yourself out of your own mind 
and submit to a belief that is higher than you, that is truthful, good, and loving. Truthful, good, and loving. If they're cutting people's hands off, that's not the right thing. If they're running around trying to set people up, that's not the right thing. And I just have to say that because while people say, well, it all leads to the same thing, that's not the truth. <laughs> that's not the truth. If there's something bad in it, and I'm not talking about the people, I'm talking about the practice. And so I believe that there is definitely a connection between all of it, and it's up to each and every one of us to find that for ourselves and keep growing. That is amazing. All right. So this is our last question. And you just gave us so much great information on how we can take control of our finances. So what tips could you give us to help us create a stable financial future for 2019? Um, I would say join the financial revolution. Go to Um, Click on product and take one of those classes. The money makeover uh, or and or the how to stop living check the Monday and build multiple streams of income. Until we learn the money game, I don't care what you do. I don't care how much money you get. If you don't learn the money game, you're going to lose it. And so there are so many stories of people. That's why I say more money doesn't solve a money problem. If it did, millionaires wouldn't go bankrupt. If more money could solve a money problem, you'd never have a make bankrupt millionaire or billionaire. So the only thing that's going to change it is the, the tools we, that we get and how we choose to apply them and that's what I will help all of the women who are reading this and who are exposed to your platform do. And um, I'm excited about it. We're ready to roll up our sleeves. That is awesome. So where can our readers get more information um, and follow you at? At Lynn Richardson on every platform. And LynnRichardson.com leads them to everything. All right. And is there any events, speaking engagements, or anything that we need to know about that we can catch you at? Uh, the Wealth Experience. WealthExperience.info, I encourage every woman to come. It's the first weekend of the year after New Year's Eve. It's where you get to rub elbows with women from all walks of life, including celebrities. Nobody's on stage and nobody's in the audience. We're all together rubbing elbows, networking, and learning about womanhood, expansion, access, leadership, transformation, and health. I think it's three ninety nine. It's the best three ninety nine you'll ever spend. And uh, we're going to be in Scottsdale, Arizona, and I would encourage everybody to come.